Let's get into game two. Um, the Celtics won 105 to 98. And this game was a lot closer than game one. It was a much better game, a lot closer. The Celtics did handle this game fairly easily. The Mavericks did come back in the fourth quarter and made it a, made it a lot closer. Uh, but for most of this game, the Celtics were in control. They were playing well. Um, now they're up 2-0, and this is a huge advantage uh, with both wins coming at home. Um, I don't remember the stat specifically, but I saw a stat the other night. Uh, apparently, historically, teams in this situation where they're up 2-0 after the, after winning the first two games of, of the finals at home go on to win a vast majority of the time. So right now, uh, it, the, it looks like the odds of the Celtics winning the championship are very high, um, which is good for, for for people in Boston, for Celtics fans. It looks like y'all are probably going to win the championship. However, this is a seven-game series. Who knows what will happen? We're still a long way away from the end of the series. You don't want to get too comfortable too quickly, but right now, the Celtics are definitely in a very good position. Now, I want to talk about what I saw from the Celtics in Game 2. They won, so I want to talk about them first. Um, I saw a lot from them that I saw in Game 1. Um, you know, they were really hurting the Mavericks defense with drives and kickouts. I think that is something that they have done extremely well through the first two games of the series. They're able to get into the paint, um, and they have so many really good ball handlers like Jason Tatum, Derek White, Drew Holiday, um, Jalen Brown to a lesser degree. They have so many guys who can handle the basketball, who can create shots off the dribble and get into the paint off the dribble, and then when and w- when that happens, the Mavericks defense is forced to rotate, sometimes to get out of position, and when that happens, when the Mavericks defense gets out of position, the Celtics are able to generate wide open shots around the three-point line, and that has been happening a lot through the first two games, and that was happening in game two. Now, the Celtics weren't great shooting threes last night. However, um, the process of their offense was great. They're getting wide open shots a lot, um, and that hasn't really changed. That didn't change at all, really, after game one. And so that is definitely something that I want to see the Mavericks make some adjustments uh, regarding. Um, I think their defense has to be way better moving forward, and they have to do a much better job of limiting open threes. It's going to be difficult. It's much easier said than done, but that is one area where the Mavericks have to change some things if they want to get back into the series. I also wanted to talk about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown a little bit um, in regards to the Celtics, you know, ball movement and being able to take advantage of the Mavericks defense on drives and kickouts. They were both really strong as playmakers in Game 2, especially Jason Tatum. He had 12 assists in Game 2, and Jalen Brown had 6 assists, so they were both really good as playmakers. And Jason Tatum has not been very good as a scorer. And, you know, if you've been keeping up with social media um, throughout the, the finals, you'll know a lot of people are highlighting that. A lot of people are talking about how Jason Tatum hasn't been that good as a scorer in the finals, and a lot of people have been very critical of him because of that. However, he is affecting the game in other areas, whether it be rebounding, playmaking, and so although, you know, he hasn't been that great as a scorer, the playmaking that that we've seen from him has been awesome. And so you love to see that. You love to see a player uh, being able to impact the game at a fairly high level, even when their shot isn't going in. And we've seen that with Tatum uh, through the first two games of this series. I also wanted to highlight Drew Holiday's performance in Game 2. He was amazing. He had 26 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 0 turnovers. Shot 2 for 4 from 3, 11 for 14 from the field. Was super efficient with an 87.4% true shooting percentage and had a box plus minus of 13.9. Some of that is very analytical stuff, so if you're not familiar with some of those terms, that's okay. Just know Drew Holiday was amazing last night. Had a big game, 
Um, and he's been playing very, very well through the first two games of the series. Um, and pretty much everyone contributed to the Celtics win last night. Um, almost all of their starters scored in double digits. The only starter for them that didn't was Al Horford. Um, and Chris Japs Porzingis, once again, had a solid game. Um, scoring 12 points, also had two blocks, um, shot four for seven from the field, wasn't quite as good as he was in game one, but is still playing fairly, fairly well coming off the bench after dealing with, um, an injury for most of the playoffs. Now we can start to talk about the Mavericks a little bit, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be very critical of the Mavericks. Um, before I get into all of my criticisms, for Dallas, I do want to give a huge shout out to Luka Doncic. You know, for the Mavericks to beat the Celtics, it's going to take Luka Doncic being incredible. Like, he's going to have to play out of his mind. And he did that last night. I mean, he was phenomenal in Game 2. He was dealing with an injury. He was questionable uh, to play last night. Uh, but he did end up playing. And man... Was he impressive? He was so good, putting up incredible numbers, 32 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists, 4 steals, did have 8 turnovers, but shot 12 for 21 from the field, 4 for 9 from 3, um, and had a true shooting percentage of 65.3%, while having a usage rate of 35%. That's incredible. He was fairly good on defense at times, uh, was awesome as a high-volume creator, was the engine of the offense, um, hit tough shots a lot. Um, he, he just was incredible last night. Now, obviously, it wasn't enough, um, but man, he's been really impressive. I've loved what I've seen from him uh, through the first two games of the series, and for a guy his age to play this well with, while playing such a difficult role is, is like insanely impressive. And this is why I am such a big fan of Luca, And it's why I think he is, you know, an all-time great talent. Like, I think he is historically special. I think he's awesome. And he's been great um, throughout the first two games of the series. And last night was just really impressive. And something that I've noticed with Luca is he's operating in the mid-range a lot more in the playoffs than usual. Um, at least... That's how I felt watching him play uh, throughout the first two games. Um, and, and I think part of the reason why is because the Celtics, when they're playing on-ball defense, when they're playing point-of-attack point defense against Luka, they're doing whatever they can to keep him off the three-point line because they don't want to give him um, you know, any, any chances to you know, take step-back jumpers, you know, to create, shot, create open shots off the dribble from downtown. And so they're trying to get him into the mid-range area of the floor because that's not a super efficient shot. And if they can do that, they can force Luka to, to take difficult shots off the dribble. And that's a big win for the Celtics' defense. Now, the bad thing for the Celtics is that Luka is just an incredible shot maker, one of the best shot makers in the NBA. And so he's able to hit these difficult shots. Um, but that is just something I wanted to mention, something I've noticed. And it's one area where I think the Celtics' defense has been really effective. Um, but Luka is just so good that, you know, He's able to hit these tough shots that the Celtics want him to take. Like, that's just how good he is as an offensive player, as a scorer, as a shot creator. He's just too good. Another issue with the Mavericks is Kyrie Irving. Dude, Kyrie Irving, God, he's been bad in the finals. Um, and I say that respectfully. It's not personal. Just basketball. He's been really, really bad, and he was really bad in Game 2. Shot just 7 for 18 from the field for a true shooting percentage of 42.4%. He's been really bad through both of the games. Um, he's playing too much hero ball, taking too many difficult shots. Um, he's got too many bad turnovers with the ball in his hands, and he needs to be great for the Mavericks to have a chance in the series. And not only has he not been great, He's been bad, like really, really bad. He struggled a lot. And if the Mavericks want to win the series, he has to play way better. He's got to be way more effective as a shot creator. And that's hard. I get it. But that is what Kyrie's game is. And that's and he's been doing that throughout the playoffs. 
He's been really, really good as a shot creator in this year's playoffs. Um, but he just hasn't been very good at putting the ball in the basket in the finals. And that has to change, and it has to change starting now. Um, it's just been really tough to watch him play in the finals uh, because he is a very talented offensive player, and there are times where his talent shines, but he just hasn't been effective enough at putting the ball in the basket off the dribble. He's taking really tough shots too often. Um, he's turning the ball over too much for my liking at times. Um yeah, he just isn't playing very well. He's got to be way better offensively if the Mavericks want to come back in this series. And the last thing I wanted to highlight for the Mavericks um, is their three-point shooting. It's been really bad, um, and it's going to be really hard for any team to beat the Celtics if they don't shoot well from three because the Celtics are an elite three-point shooting team. And last night, the Mavericks shot just 23.1% from three. And something that I think is a really bad sign for the Mavs is the fact that Jason Tatum wasn't great as a scorer last night. The Celtics didn't shoot all that well from three. They shot just, let me see, 25.6% uh, from three, and Luka was awesome. Yet, they still lost. And that's a really bad sign. So if the Mavericks want to um, come back in the series, I think they've got to be better shooting from three. Their role players have to be way better shooting from behind the arc um, in their limited, you know, their limited shot attempts from downtown. Kyrie Irving has to be way better as a shot creator. Um, he's got to be way better offensively overall. I want to see him hitting open jumpers. I want to see him be more effective as a scorer off the dribble. Um, and I think on defense, they have to be better on rotations. They have to be better um, when they're playing on-ball defense, keeping the Celtics from getting inside the paint because the Celtics are able to get into the paint too easily and it's leading to open three-point jumpers um, that they're hitting usually. And if that happens, you know, it's going to be just really tough for the for the Mavericks to win any game in this series. So um, those are the three changes or three adjustments I want to see from the Mavericks um, as we move forward throughout this series. You know, better three-point shooting, better shot creation, um, and better shot making from Kyrie Irving, and better rotations and point of attack defense, or point of attack defense. Just in general, I want to see them play better on-ball defense and stay in front of their man, um, you know, as we move forward throughout this series. Well, those are my thoughts about Game 2 of the NBA Finals. Uh, the Celtics are up 2-0 now. Um, my my pre-finals uh, prediction of the Mavericks winning the series is not looking good, um, but we'll see what happens uh, throughout the series. I've been really impressed with the Celtics. They are playing extremely well. If Jason Tatum catches fire at any point in this series, I think um, the Celtics could win this uh, series in like four or five games. They're that good, and they are playing that well. They're on fire right now, and the Mavs are really struggling. Thank you.